Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the DeHart House. It is Sunday, June 10th, and this is episode 36. And it has totally been a month since I've seen you guys, and I'm so sorry. Also, Marjorie is in here chewing on one of her toys. She is my two-year-old black lab, and I really, really apologize if you can hear that. Um, yes, we went for a walk this morning, and then she played in the sprinkler in the backyard, took a little nap, and now she is wanting to be nearby, but not on screen. <laughs> Um, so yeah, she's chewing on a toy, and again, I apologize if you can hear that. I am drinking some cinnamon apple tea, because I already had my two cups of coffee, and it's time to switch to tea. Um, yeah, it's episode 36, it has been a month, and again, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, I just didn't feel like it. I'm sorry. I just, I didn't want to, like, do my hair and put on makeup and <laughs> sit here and talk about all my things, uh, but mainly I didn't want to clean my craft room, <laughs> but I finally did. So now I'm here and <laughs> whatever. Okay, so, um, what have I been doing? Uh, a lot actually. I have been number one being lazy because it's summer. Uh, number two, I've been lazy because it has been over 100, 100 degrees Fahrenheit here in Texas. Like, are you kidding me? I can't. I just can't. Like, Okay, I'm originally from Michigan, like born and raised, all the way through um, getting my bachelor's degree, then I moved to Montana for grad school, and now I'm in Texas for work, like I got hired down here, and I've been here, what, two years, two years now, something like that, and um, yeah, I, I just, I don't, I don't know how people do it in the heat. Like, anyone who has to work outside in 100 degree weather, I feel, I, f I feel so much for you. Like, I can't believe it. Plus, with the climate around here, it's, it's not like trees are super prevalent and trees with leaves that provide shade aren't super prevalent. Um, it is so hot, it is so dry, and you have to water anything if you want it to grow. Uh, like, water it a lot, because it doesn't rain here very much either. <sighs> yeah. So, what have I been doing? I've been trying to sit inside in the air conditioning and do as little as possible, <laughs> because as soon as I walk out that door, like, I'm immediately sweating. It's insane. So, today is uh, going to be a high of, I think, 96 degrees or something like that. I guess it's better than 106 degrees, but above, like, 85 degrees Fahrenheit, everything feels the same to me. And, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's been crazy hot here in West Texas, and... I've been inside knitting, and summer session has started, so I've been inside uh, teaching as well, and uh, yeah, basically just trying to stay indoors. If you're going to do anything outside, if I'm going to do anything, I should probably speak for myself, um, if you live in West Texas, you feel my pain, but, uh, or anywhere hot. If I'm going to have to get anything done outside, it has to be done in the morning before the sun starts warming everything up. And 
what's really unfortunate is that it's only getting down to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit at night, which is, which is like my ideal summer temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what it is at night when the sun is down. That's the coldest it's getting here right now. So I mowed the lawn yesterday morning. I got up at five o'clock, had my breakfast and went out and just started mowing the lawn. It was probably like 6.30 in the morning when I got started, and <sighs> anyway. I mean, it is nice that the rest of the day I'm like, ooh, my one chore is done for the day. Like, <laughs> mowing the lawn in the heat is so exhausting that I pretty much let myself off the hook for any other chores that day. <laughs> I mean, I did some laundry, but whatever. Yeah, so taking Marjorie out for walks, like I said, she's a black lab. Um, and I feel really bad for her covered in fur going out in this heat. So the really the only time we go for a walk is in the morning. And I'm sorry, Marjorie, but it's only if I feel up for it. <laughs> I know she just laid down. <sighs> whatever. Uh, yeah, so I'm surviving through the heat. The funny thing is, is we went on vacation. Uh, let's see, when was it? Ooh, um, the week and a half before Memorial Day weekend. So this is when Michael and I usually go on vacation, is, uh, right when the spring semester lets out, you know, graduation happens. We stick around for a couple days to make sure, you know, we've turned in all of our paperwork and wrapped, you know, wrapped everything up for the semester. And then we take off on vacation and we usually come back Memorial Day weekend. When we go on vacation, we don't want to be around people. We want quiet nature, seeing wildlife, just relaxing and having people around just makes it, I don't want to say stressful, but like, I don't want to hear loud music when I'm camping, and I don't want to, you know, hear your kids screaming when I'm camping, so this is why we go camping, is because we don't want to be around all the people and the noise, like, we just want to relax, like, let me relax, would you? So that's usually when we go on vacation, because, you know, um high school, middle school, elementary school is still in session, and so usually families aren't going on vacation at that time. Um, and I know Memorial Day weekend is a big popular weekend to go out camping and whatnot, so we make it a point to come back that weekend. <laughs> so. Anyway, we just... we just need a cleanse from people. Like, I spent all semester long around people and then final exams right before graduation I get bombed by people who are like stressed out about finals and then I'm just like that's it I've met my quota for the month I need to just get away from people and just relax so we did that we went to Colorado and camped in the mountains and it did get down to freezing at night, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and probably only into the 70s during the day, and it was wonderful. We took Marjorie with us, we camped, we hiked, um, we wanted to go backpacking, but decided it was a little too cold for that, so we just kept car camping in campgrounds, uh, went and saw some pretty towns, uh, and we just had a really nice vacation. And then we come back to Texas, and that very first day we come back, yes, a high of 101 degrees. And we were like, we should have stayed in Colorado. <laughs> anyway, no, we had a really great time. So um, maybe I'll put some pictures at the end of the episode or something, but uh, we went to see the... I think it's called, I, 
I don't know. It's a big sand dune right next to a mountain range. Great Sand Dune National Park, something like that. It was interesting. It literally was a big pile of sand right next to a mountain. Uh, we did no go we did not go out on the sand dune because it was storming when we showed up. Um, like rain, thunder, and lightning. And one of the rangers was like, you know, you shouldn't go out there, it's dangerous. And so we took a few pictures and left. <laughs> but yeah, it was um, very, very enjoyable. So, okay. <sighs> like I said, I'm teaching this summer, so I'm kind of like, not technically on call all the time, but I never know when a student or um, my boss is going to email me and some things have to be taken care of sooner rather than later. So <laughs> like I'm always checking my phone. So um, anyway, hey, I'm like 11 minutes in. So do you guys want to talk about some knitting and spinning and stuff? Uh, by the way, this is my crafty podcast. I'm trying out something a little bit different here with recording. Um, I'm using a separate microphone from my webcam. My webcam has a built-in microphone, and I've decided to try this guy out. So, uh, if I accidentally hit this microphone, I really super apologize in advance because... While I was setting everything up and making sure everything worked, and as you can see, I like to talk with my hands, I kept hitting the microphone. So it might happen. It will prob. I'm 99% sure I will accidentally hit this microphone with something during this episode. So I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so. I did tidy up in here a little bit. I did tidy this half of the room. <laughs> the other half is a mess. The half that I'm looking at is atrocious. But um, yeah, I have piles of fabric that I need to put in the... Um, I keep my fabric in, you know, Rubbermaid t containers to keep them protected from um, fading in the light. Because like I said, I'm in Texas and the sunlight is insanely intense. Um, so I like to protect it from the sunlight, protect it from dust, and protect it from Marjorie's dog hair. Um, so um, I went shopping and I have a pile of fabric that I need to put away. So anyway. Okay, so last time I saw you guys, I don't even remember. I don't even remember what I showed you guys. Um, <laughs> First of all, uh, if you have not already joined the D Hard House podcast group on Ravelry, you should do that because we have a couple of year-long knit-alongs going on, and both of them have to do with blankets. So I have one for adult-sized blankets and another one for baby blankets. So any blanket that you knit, crochet, so I don't care what craft you use, weave. Um, to make it. If you finish it this year in 2018, I would like you to take a nice photo and then post it in the, uh, oh yeah, make along. It's not a knit along because you can use any craft. Post it in the appropriate make along thread. So we have the cozy couch make along, which is all about making the adult size blankets. I do not care if it is a uh, twin size or a king size uh, blanket. I just ask that it be big enough to cover an adult. Uh, so if you finish it this year, I don't care when you started it, it counts. Same with the baby blanket, but instead for a baby. And there are no requirements about dimensions, type of yarn, or type of fabric, or whatever materials it is you're using. Uh, just that it be baby blanket size and be finished this year. So uh, I finished a baby blanket and I know I at least showed you progress on this. I don't know if I showed it to you finished so I'm just going to show it to you now. If I did show it to you last time, oh well you get to see it again. So this is 
just hit the cord for the microphone. Okay, so this is a this is called the blended brioche baby blanket, and it's finished. So I knit this out of DK weight acrylic yarn from Hobby Lobby. This is Baby B yarn and I don't remember the color names but we've got a nice green a nice like almost teal blue and then this nice light baby blue and okay so it's knit this way right and it's brioche the whole thing is brioche except for a garter edge uh, so when I was blocking this, it just, it wanted to go the other way. So when knitting this, the intention was that the, the lines, whatever, the way I'm knitting it, these are the rows, okay? The intention was for this way to be the long side and for this way to be the short side. No. That's what it ended up being. The intention was to knit up the long side, right? This would be long. And then the number of stitches I had would be the short. But the way it blocked out, it switched. So that is super confusing. I'm a teacher and I should be better at explaining things. Okay. <laughs> this is terrible. I did not make show notes. I did not make any notes of any kind. So this is just me off the cuff <laughs> improv. So, okay. Yeah. So it ended up being like that the number of stitches in my rows is the long side and the number of rows that I knit is the shorter side. So let's see. I can show you. Right. Which is kind of cool, actually. I really, really like how it turned out. It's super soft, uh, super squishy, and it was brioche, so it was really fun to knit. Uh, I didn't have a lot of leftover yarn. I did try to use as much as possible, so yeah, I'm really happy with it. So I need to, well, I did take a picture, so I need to post it in the Cozy Crib Make Along, which is for the baby blankets. And the, this is for, excuse me, a coworker. And I did not finish this until she had already left on maternity leave. So um, when she comes back, I will give it to her. <laughs> But yeah, she had a boy and hence boy colors, blue and green and whatnot. So yes, I am excited to gift this to her. So I'm going to wrap it finally and set it aside and I'll probably take it to work and keep it in my office until I find out she's back and then all I have to do is just walk it over to her. So. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Uh, the blended baby brioche blanket, blended brioche baby blanket, say that 10 times fast, uh, is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. Uh, I really like the, the pattern. It was very easy to follow. It was originally intended for five colors to be used, and I only used three. So I did a little bit of a modification, but anyway. Okay, speaking of blankets. Uh, so the reason I started the Cozy Couch Make Along is because I wanted motivation to work on my blankets. And I put a few squares on my mitered square blanket. thing is giant enormous so I think I put on what like four squares three three I put on three squares 
That's pitiful. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Whew, this thing is massive. Yeah, so I put on three squares. These three right here. I am in, I think, row 12 of squares. Let me see. I'm on the 12th row. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm almost halfway across. It is 20 squares wide. And the plan is to go 20 squares tall. And I'm at the 12th row. So I'm over the halfway mark. Um, I like this blanket. Don't get me wrong. But yes, my mojo has died. The motivation to work on this has totally died. And I think the main reason why I'm not liking working on this is because of all of the color changes. But that's like the best part about this blanket is that it's all of these crazy colors, you know? But I like to knit while we're watching TV because I'm just sitting there anyway and I can knit without looking at my work for 100% of the time and so I can do that multitasking. But when I'm changing colors all the time I have to keep pausing the show or the movie that we're watching to go pick out my next color. But then it's not, I'm not just randomly picking colors to put in here. I'm trying to like balance out the colors. Like don't put a pink right next to a red. And try not to repeat that color twice in any row or column. And so like it doesn't just take me a minute to grab a color. It ends up taking me like 10. And I just, I feel so bad that you know, Michael and I are watching this show and it's always in a dramatic spot where I'm like, I need to get another color. Can we pause it? And then, I, and then I take 10 minutes. Yeah. So I haven't been wanting to work on this, but I did pick it up and I put three squares on it. Um, the intention is to take this camping, uh, so we can have just this huge blanket um, to snuggle up in when we go camping. And I really like this mitered square pattern because, number one, when you add the squares on, you, you literally just add it on and knit it right here. So there's no seaming to do later. I hate seaming don't know why, but I just, I don't enjoy it. So I really like this pattern because you add as you go. Um, I also like that they are squares. So I'm not having to knit across this ginormous thing back and forth. I can see the progress so much easier in a square. Um, so for me, I need that and I love it. Uh, I also like that if I get the, if, when I get the 20 by 20 squares finished, excuse me, uh, if I still want it to be bigger, I can always add on to it later. Like, and it won't, you know, it won't mess up the design. Or if I decide, you know what, I want to put a border around the whole thing, I could do that. I could crochet a border on here. Or I could add like all white squares around the edge or whatever and it would still be, you know, it would look like that's what I had intended. It's not going to mess up the design at all. Uh, versus like Michael's TARDIS blanket, which I haven't touched in a long time and I feel really bad about. Um, <laughs> If I want to make changes to that later, it's going to be pretty obvious that I decided to make a change. So, um, so I do like this blanket a lot in that as I go and this is how I am, I just, I go, oh my God, but it would be so much better if I changed this thing about it. I can do that with this design. So I do really like that, which is great when you're making something so ginormous and it takes you like two years. It's a lot of time for me to think about changes I want to make. 
Oh my gosh, this thing is massive. So, yeah. Um, three squares is not a lot, but whatever. And then, I'm not finished with the blanket dock. This thing was, like I said, bugging me because I have to keep getting up and getting colors. And I like it, but I don't like it. So what did I do? I started a new blanket. Because I'm insane. Why would I do that? Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. By the way, this is all um, worsted weight acrylic yarn, which is stored in this container right here. Uh, just different brands, different colors. Some of them are shiny, some of them are not, some of them are variegated, most of them are solid. Uh, just random, just random acrylic yarn that I've picked up and acquired over the years and still purchase, especially when it's on sale. <laughs> anyway. So I started another blanket. Okay. <sighs> so, with this one, I decided, you know what, instead of doing the random color thing, I'm going to knit a blanket that goes with our color scheme here in the house. So I really like the, uh, the farmhouse decor with all the whites and grays and the blacks and the browns. Uh, but of course, <laughs> I can never be like on trend mainstream because why would I do that? That's boring. Uh, <laughs> I like the farmhouse color scheme, but I don't like all the farm things like the the windmills and calves and pigs and things like that. Um, I much prefer like the like a lodge or a cabin with like bears and mooses and things like that. So whatever. Here's some here's some random information about me. So uh, I decided <laughs> I really like the mitered square blanket. And if you watch the Legacy Knits podcast, uh, then you know that Chelsea has knit a uh, mitered square blanket for her daughter out of their hand-dyed yarn, the Legacy yarn. Um, and if you don't watch the Legacy Knits podcast, you should, because those two are amazing to watch. Uh, so anyway, the, this mitered square blanket she's knitting for her daughter, um, she's kind of knitting it like from the center out. And I love her reasoning with this, is that she can add on to the blanket as her daughter grows and make the blanket bigger along with her daughter. And, you know, I, I just think that's really cool. That's a neat idea. Um, I don't have any children, so this is for me, not for um, any children, but this blanket will grow with me, you guys. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I really liked her from the center out idea. And with the mitered square blanket, there's that um, ridge that goes diagonally through the square. And so depending on how you put the squares on, you can change the direction of that ridge. Okay. So I went in my stash, my big thing of acrylic yarn here, and found these colors. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I love this buffalo check pattern. Excuse me. Uh, love it. So here's what I'm doing. I st I'm starting in the center. And I put a stitch marker on there because I kept kind of losing it when I was working on it. And I'm putting the mitered ridge to make this, this pattern. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it so, so much. I love it. There I go. I hit the microphone. Told you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I right now have a six by six square and I intentionally stopped here so that it would be square when I showed it to you guys. I started this on Tuesday. It has not even been a week yet. I knit three squares on the blanket I already have going, and then 36 on this one. I'm so weird. I'm so weird. But if you are a crafter, you know 
inspiration and motivation play a key part in getting stuff done. And since I am just not inspired and motivated to work on my colorful blanket, but I am to work on this, this is seeing a lot of progress. So yeah, so I'm doing the uh, the buffalo check, you know, plaid pattern, uh, uh, and angling the mitered ridge. Wow, I am not coordinated today either. Yep. I love it so much. I love it so much. And uh, so I teach math and I love to keep track of progress with numbers because that's what makes sense to me. So of course I'm sitting here doing the math going, okay, so I started out with the uh, the four by four, or four by four, the two by two in the middle, right? And it took, it took me way too long to think about how to angle those off. It's not that hard. I don't know why I was making it harder than it needed to be. But yeah, so I started with this, the four squares in the middle, and then, you know, went out and around. But to get the ridges to go different ways, you don't start at the end and go across. You got to start in the middle and work out. So, okay, figured that out. So instead of going across a whole row, if you want these to face different directions, then you have to knit them starting here out in those different directions. So okay, got that figured out. So yeah, this is a 6x6, six six, so it has 36 squares. So to add the next layer around, that will make it an 8x8, eight eight, making it a total of 64 squares. So essentially, I gotta add like, what, 28 more squares on this to get the next round. Okay, I can do this. <laughs> whatever. So I want to make this just as big as the big colorful blanket. And um, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm love, love, loving this project. Uh, this is pretty much all that I've worked on this week because it's so much fun. And I, I knew I wanted to do this podcast sooner rather than later because I've been putting it off. And uh, I wanted to have a little more to show to you guys than just four squares. So yeah, I'm super excited. <laughs> so, if you want to be crazy like me and start an adult blanket right now, or start a baby blanket right now, you can still enter into these make-alongs. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> All right. So, that concludes blanket talk. I'll just put all the blankets together. So, what else do I want to share? I want to share spinning because I got something new. Okay, if you follow me on Instagram, I am reading it run on Instagram. I posted a picture of my brand new spinning wheel. Well, new to me, it's used. But yes, I have never owned a spinning wheel before and I now own one. So I'm gonna adjust the camera a little bit so that you guys can see the spinning wheel better. Okay, so I uh, have never owned a spinning wheel before and this is used, but it's new to me, and I absolutely love it. So I am by no means an expert spinner. I would still consider myself a beginner. Uh, I have a few drop spindles, and I've been spinning that way for a year, but not continuously. It's not like I've been spinning all year long. So yeah, I love this thing. So I did not spend a lot of money on this, and what I did was just, I kept looking online 
for months until I finally found something that was in my price range nearby. Okay, so I joined, let me just find it here, okay. It's a group on Facebook. It's called All Fiber Equipment for Sale. And so people can post anything from spinning wheels to looms to drop spindles to yarn to fiber, you know, whatever. Anything having to do with fiber. All fiber equipment for sale. I joined this group um, and just kept looking through the postings of spinning wheels for sale until I finally found this one. So uh, this lady was selling it. Um, she had picked it up from an estate sale, had no idea how to even use it or anything, um, was selling it in an antique shop, uh, posted it in this Facebook group, and I pounced on it. Uh, it was a two-hour drive away, which, considering the size of Texas, is not too bad. And, um, yeah, all the parts were there, plus some extra bobbins, and also included in the deal was a loom. They don't know much about looms, so I think I actually, I think it was actually two looms, and I, I can't tell if both are homemade or if only one of them is, but they're not in working condition. I, I don't know. I still have to do more research about looms. So the looms are in another room right now in timeout until <laughs> I can figure out what to do with them. Uh, but the spinning wheel, on the other hand, I thought even if the looms don't work, the price I'm paying for everything all together is still what I would pay for this spinning wheel. So even if the looms turn out to not work, I don't care. I don't care. This is what I wanted. So, um, I'll keep you updated on the looms. I need Michael to take a look at them. So sorry, I had to sneeze. Um, <laughs> I have to have Michael take a look at them because I think it needs some, some fixing or some new parts or s something. And Michael's good with that kind of thing, so... <laughs> I'll, I'll keep you guys updated. So, anyway, this is what looks like an Ashford traditional wheel. I am like 99.9% .9 sure this is an Ashford traditional wheel. It does not say, it doesn't say Ashford anywhere on here. And if any of you know where to look to like see that label, could you like comment below or send me a message or something because I'm really curious. <laughs> um, I I don't know how old this wheel is. Um, I don't know if it's had, you know, how many previous owners it's had. Like, I, I don't know any of that information. All I know is that it works like a dream. So, I'm going to angle this down a little bit. And don't judge, I'm totally wearing pajama pants. <laughs> Okay, so let me just move the microphone. Okay. So, yeah, um, it's a single treadle. And it spins really nicely. I did replace the drive band. I have it rolled up on the side here. Um, it had... It was... It was cotton yarn um, and it worked fine but it would only go around the small part of the flyer and it wouldn't go around the larger part so it was stuck on the fast speed <laughs> and I was having a hard time with it so I um, put on a new strand of cotton yarn and now I can spin at the slower speed, which is more my thing since I'm still a beginner. Um, yeah. The flyer.
lighter, and it came with a total of four bobbins. Um, the flyer has five hooks on it, and only on the one side of the flyer. So, like I said, I don't know how old this is, but everything works just fine, and that's all I care about. <laughs> Um, I don't need fancy toys. I just need toys. So, don't make that dirty. Okay, so, yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys. I love it so much. Now, let's see if I can zoom this in here at all. Please bear with me. So, um, I don't know if you can see this super well, but there is, like, um, a screw in here with a hexagon top. Yes, hexagon six sides. <laughs> so um, when I first brought this home and I was cleaning, cleaning this up, putting some oil on, you know, all the moving parts, this screw was sticking up like really tall on here. And so I was looking up videos on how to clean your wheel, how to maintain your wheel, like, you know, because I'm, I'm brand new to this. And I was doing a bunch of research. So when I was spinning this, it would clunk. Now, if I just spun it like this, it wouldn't make a noise. But if I actually used the pedal, what was happening is the, the crank back here, this joint, the piece of wood would be slipping. So before, I could move this around without moving the wheel which is bad. It was slipping. And I did a bunch of research and thought I would have to buy new parts and whatever. So what I was doing is I was messing with this screw. And I thought, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to look inside. I'm going to see what's going on. And turns out this screw is acting like a pin. And all I needed to do was push it in further. It just wasn't completely into place. So I did. I got out a hammer. I hammered it in. It's sticking out a little bit on the opposite side, the end of the screw, right there. And now it's perfect. It's perfect. So, um, yeah, I'm really glad I did a bunch of research. I watched a lot of different videos. I read a lot of different websites. Um, and I'm glad I didn't go out and buy new parts. Uh, one thing, though, I'm going to have to handle at some point is that these joints right here are starting to come apart a little bit. I can put my nail in there. And maybe I'll put a picture or something so you guys can see close up. But, um, yeah, there's one, two, three, four. Okay, so they're in quadrants. But, um, yeah, all the joints here are starting to come apart a little bit. And so... Um, I don't know. I'm going to do a little more research and talk to Michael because he's, he's good at that sort of thing and we'll figure something out because I really want this wheel to last. It's, it's a beautiful wheel. Um, Ashford is, you know, <laughs> a really good company. They make quality things that last a long time and I, I do. I want this to last a long time. So. I'm very, very happy with my spinning wheel, and um, let me just show you some some things that I've been spinning. Okay, so like I said, I'm not an expert spinner by any means, so let me just share with you my spinning experience. It is sitting in my lap. <laughs> okay, so um, about a year ago, I'd say, I, you know, was watching podcasts and people were talking about spinning and I did a little research and you know drop spindles don't cost as much as a spinning wheel so I thought well that'd be a neat way to get started so I had ordered a beginner kit on Etsy which came with a top top whirl drop spindle and you know it's got some weight to it and uh, I used this to spin and ply this yarn right here. And, the, you know, this fiber came with the, excuse me, with the drop spindle. Uh, two shades of blue. There's a dark blue and a light blue. 
So I made a single ply with the dark blue, a single ply with the light blue, and then plied the two together. And it's not the most even thing in the world. It's it's small and then thick. And now after practicing more, um, over twisted in many places <laughs> and not enough twist in some places. So yeah, that's the first thing I made. Not super amazing. Haven't even knit with it. Okay. Then, um, at DFW Fiberfest, oh no, and then, after I did that, I made myself, oh, I should have grabbed the spindle, I made myself a spindle, because this is kind of heavy, and I wanted a lighter spindle, so I could, so I could spin thinner yarn, because I knit using a lot of fingering weight yarn. So, um, this is just a wooden dowel, and I used polymer clay and just made this thing and painted it blue. Okay. But stuck with the top whorl design. Okay. Much lighter spindle. So I spun a bunch of singles on this, and then it sat for a really long time. In fact, this sat on the spindle until I came home from DFW Fiberfest in April this year with a Turkish spindle. Okay. So I've got my Turkish spindle and actually I have something in progress on here. Spinning some and I should say this is this is Merino. Merino wool in the from the beginner kit. Um I got this is also Mariner Mariner <laughs> uh Merino wool that I picked up at DFW Fiberfest. Um from a booth nearby the booth that sold me this spindle. Um, okay, so yeah, I went to DFW in April, um, saw a demonstration uh, about how to chain ply with a Turkish drop spindle, and I just absolutely fell in love. And I feel like I learned a lot about spinning, just practicing, just doing this. Okay, so I bought the spindle at Fiberfest, bought the fiber so I could at least get started, and then that way if I had any questions I could go back and ask Jerry, you know, am I doing this right? What the heck? I don't want to go home and then forget everything. So I was doing that, and I was like, oh, I really want to apply the singles, um, the big long strand of singles that I'd put on this guy. But I already have, you know, this thing in progress on my spindle. So I was like, okay, I'm going to spin. Um, I bought four ounces of this fiber at Fiberfest. So I thought, okay, I'm going to spin until I put an ounce of it on here, and then I'll take it off, and then I can ply that other thing. And so that's what I did. I took off the one ounce of yarn that I spun. And if you're familiar with a Turkish drop spindle, you know that when you take that yarn off the spindle, it's already in a center pull ball. Why are you not focusing on the yarn? Come on! This is a yarny podcast! It just doesn't know. The camera doesn't know better. Anyway. Oh, it's so nice. It's so nice. Anyway. Saying before I started yelling at the camera. So this is one ounce. Oh yes, it comes off in a center pull ball. But um, I wanted to count the yardage. Why did I want to? Because I want to know what I can make out of this. And if you don't know how much you have, it can be hard to plan a project. So, okay, so I got out my nitty knotty, which it's conveniently on the messy side of the room, so I'm not going to go over there and get it. But um, I have a nitty knotty that Michael and I made out of PVC pipe. I should just call myself the cheap crafter because that's what I am, but I don't care, guys. It gets the job done. So, um, so yeah, this is about 98 yards, and this is one ounce of fiber. 
So it's pretty dang close to being fingering weight, which is what I was going for. This is three ply, because I did the chain ply. And it's this just really nice natural gray. It is 100% merino. Aha, I just had to get it closer. So it's definitely not going to be socks. Um, I was thinking some kind of some kind of cowl or shawl or something, you know, because it feels really nice. Yep. Okay, so I'm plying as I go, spinning the yarn onto the spindle, and uh, you can see I started another ounce over here. Uh, so once I emptied my Turkish spindle, Michael, I'm podcasting. Gosh, he's trying to call me. Sorry, I don't know that one. Do you guys get that too? That's so silly. Echo, I'm podcasting. Sorry, I'm not sure. I should just do that. Jody, you're the best. So, <laughs> okay. What the heck was I saying? I emptied my Turkish drop spindle. I took the singles. Single. It was one thing. Um, off from here. So I kept it on here, right? And I put this in a uh, lazy Kate that I made out of a box cheap grafter, uh, and then use my <laughs> Turkish drop spindle to chain ply. And that was really awesome. So then I took, you know, that center pull ball off the Turkish drop spindle, used my knitting knotty to put it into a skein, you know, gave it a little soak, and um, this is what I got. Which is pretty. This is Malabrigo Noob, and the colorway is Piedras. And since I did chain ply this, right, um, you can see that it kept those singles of the same color with itself. So instead of applying, you know, like the purple with the blue, it kept purple with purple. So this should be interesting to see how it knits up. Um, this is about a hundred yards. It does seem a bit thinner than the gray that I spun up. Um, I need to do the wraps per inch thing to figure out, you know, whether these are fingering weight or not. I don't know. But yeah, so I spun a, a almost 200 yards. Now this is three ply. So 200 yards finished, but each one has three strands in it. So yeah, that was a lot of spinning and really fun. So then I bring my spinning wheel home and I get it all cleaned up, I get it in working order, and then I'm like, okay, I have to try it. I have to make sure that I figure out how to use this thing. So, I came in here in the craft room and pulled out the rest of this fiber, the blue fiber. Because um, I didn't use it all up with the drop spindle. So I was like, okay, that'd be perfect to try out on the spinning wheel. So I just spun one big long strand of single and then did chain plying on the spinning wheel, which was interesting. Uh, yeah, so this is what I came up with. I didn't finish doing the math to figure out the yardage, but who cares. So again with the chain plying, it kept, oh god, that's so hard to see with my lighting. It kept the dark blue with the dark blue and the light blue with the light blue. So if I 
undo this. Okay. This is horrible. <laughs> this is horrible. Horrible. Look at that. Just come on, focus. Horrible. Like that is disgusting. What the heck? So yeah, I had twist issues. Most of this is definitely over twisted. Um but the fact that I can tell that it's over twisted is good. I'm I'm learning. I'm making progress. So yeah, like that right there. Okay, don't focus on my eyeballs. Come on. Come on. They want to see what I messed up on. Okay, can you see that? Come on. But there's the single, which is super, super over twisted. And when I was chain plying, it was really hard to get. Look, I have horns. <laughs> ah! Cameras are hard. Cameras are hard to use, you guys. Anyway, that is the single, like, twisting back on itself and it didn't get stretched out straight when I was plying. So when I was, you know, reaching through the loop to grab another loop when you're chain plying, um, you know, and I'd loosen up on the yarn a little bit so I could get through here, and the yarn, the single was so over twisted that it was wanting to twist on itself, and then by the time I, you know, stretched the yarn back out taut, you know, and then let go with this hand to send the twist up for plying, I couldn't get this to actually st straighten out anymore. So I definitely had way, way too much twist. So I don't know if I'll make anything out of this yarn, but it was really nice to have some fiber to play with. And now this is just a ready messy ball thing um <laughs> but yeah it's oh my gosh I could point out so many things anyway doesn't matter it was fun to play around on I feel like by the end I was starting to get the hang of it um it is more difficult on a spinning wheel for me to tell whether I've put too much twist in something or not enough twist in something. Um, I guess not enough twist is pretty easy because then the yarn breaks. Um, but too much twist is still hard for me to completely get a sense of on the spinning wheel versus on the drop spindle. So I'm going to be practicing that. Um, I do have more of this Malabrigo Noob. Um, so I think I'm going to work with that next. Um, let me just grab the bag. I have my fiber right back here. So yeah, I have this Malabrigo Noob in the Piedras colorway. I still, as you can see, have a lot of the fiber um, still that I haven't spun. And look at that, I still have the tag. Yep. Um, so I think I'll probably take this to the spinning wheel next. And um, I think this time instead of doing chain ply, I will just do two ply. Um, while I do like the whole, you know, keep the same color with itself when plying, I think it'll look really cool with the colors mixed in the ply. So I want to give that a try. Um, it's interesting because I just want to play around and try all these different things, but at the same time it's like I still want to make yarn that I want to use for something. I don't want to just make yarn and then throw it in the trash. Like, like this? I'm, I'm probably going to hang on to it just so I can be like, you know, this is the first yarn I made, look how crappy it is. Um, and then look how far I've come. 
and I'm just gonna have to untangle this later. <laughs> but I'm not gonna make anything out of this. If I do anything with this, it would probably be weaving. <laughs> because, because reasons. So, anyway. I'm excited. I'm super excited. I was so excited that I got on Etsy and ordered more fiber. Mm -hmm. So, I still have this. I also have um, this guy, which I picked up last year at Stitches when they were in Dallas. Blue Mule Fiber. Um, and yeah, pretty blues and kind of a pink. It's, it's a reddish pink color. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to spin with that. I also have some undyed Cordale in that plastic bag right there. Um, and, you know, I still have all of this, which I think I'm just going to keep using the Turkish spindle for, because I really want to spin all four ounces of that and try to be as consistent as possible, so I don't want to switch tools that I'm using, um, because obviously that's going to make something different. <laughs> but... Yeah, I'm, I'm having lots of fun. I'm super happy. And if you guys have any advice, I would love, love to hear it. Because like I said, I consider myself very much a beginner still. Um, I know how to draft, but only one way. I definitely spin worsted. Um, I know how to ply two different ways. I can do two ply and three ply. Um... There's still so much to learn, and as a teacher who loves learning, whether it's math or fiber or whatever, um, it does just make me so excited that I get to do that in my hobbies. So, yeah, super fun. Anyway, so, oh, I forgot to show you guys. I have... Okay, so I have a shop on Etsy, which is D Heart House Creations, where I sell handmade bags, amongst other things, but mostly bags. Um, so, when I'm spinning with my Turkish drop spindle, I have been using one of my flat bags to hold the fiber. Which is really nice because this bag has no um, no interfacing in it. It's super flexible and whatnot. It has no um, zippers or snaps or anything that's going to snag that fiber. I can have it hanging over my arm while I'm spinning. And so um, if I had kept this attached to the rest of the fiber, you know, this could be holding my fiber while I'm spinning. Um, so I thought I'd just share that with you guys because I didn't even think about that. That <laughs> This is a project bag. This is only meant to hold knitting when, no, it can hold fiber when you're spinning. And so, yeah, I've been um, watching my niece and nephew and I just take this over to their house with me and do a little spinning and it's really portable and really handy and I love it. So. Um, I do have flat bags in the shop if you're interested, and one interesting cool feature about them is that they are completely reversible. Like I said, there's no interfacing, snaps, zippers, nothing that's going to snag um, your fiber or your knitting or whatever it is you put in here, so that's cool. Speaking of my shop, what a great segue. <laughs> okay. So, D Hard House Creations on Etsy is going to have some new bags posted in it very soon, if not today. Uh, and one of those bags is a pineapple bag. So, rainbow pineapples, which are super fun. So, one of my nieces is like obsessed with pineapples. I'm not entirely sure why. 
someone said something about a movie quote referring to pineapples. Uh, but anyway, so I bought this fabric with her in mind. And I've set some aside for something for her for Christmas. But, um, yeah, so it's got the outside clear pocket with a snap. Uh, you've got your little attachments here on the side. And I need to make some more um, clip-on handles. So the clip-on handles you can clip on here on these little rings. Wow. Can't see that at all, can you? Okay. Um, you get to decide the closure at checkout, whether you want to have snaps or a zipper. And so I just add that in later. Now, if I compare this to one of my other bags. Okay. So I've decided to play around with my design again because I'm like that. Like I said, I like to change my mind. I rearrange the furniture in our rooms like at least three times a year because I just get bored with it. <laughs> anyway, so I was doing this leather bottom on the bags, but um, I'm kind of weaning out of that. Um, and I'm just going to keep the leather for the fixtures. So anywhere where there are the clips and the handle. I'm going to keep making those out of this. It's not real leather, it's fake leather um, stuff. So, And then that way we get more of the pretty colorful fabric. So, um, But I'm keeping the pocket on the outside, the clear pocket. And I also decided to make the base just a little bit wider. So here's, and I actually have stuff inside of here. Um, so there's the previous bag, and then here's the new bag. Oh my gosh, Alicia. Okay. So I don't know if you can tell, but it is just a smidge wider. It's probably like an inch wider on the base than previously. Um, I just felt that it needed a little bit more room in there. Like you can totally fit, in this one, I can fit two balls of yarn in the bottom of this bag. Um, whew. Uh, and that's great. It's very snug. Some people like that, some people don't. So I thought, why not? Let's add l just a little more room on the bottom of the bag. So that's what I did. And it's also a little bit taller. Oh, God, you guys can't see that. Okay. Can you see that? <sighs> Here I am trying to show you guys compare. I don't even know if you can see it. Anyway, pineapple bag is going up in the shop. This has a bigger base and is also a bit taller. So it's a bigger bag for the same price. <laughs> Okay, and it will come in, come with a clip-on handle, um, and you get to decide the closure. So, um, this is just the next one that I came up with. So, um, yeah, the bottoms are boxed, and you can fold them up flat to store, right? I feel like it all of a sudden, maybe not all of a sudden, but I'm all of a sudden just noticing that it's like super bright on the camera and things are blowing out, but yep. Anyway, super cute. I'm excited. I love this, especially with it being summer. So pineapple bag will be going up in the shop. I have, I'm so sorry. I have some other fabric. Um, that I'm working with. Uh, I had to go to the store and get some coordinating interior fabric because I didn't realize I was out of the pattern I wanted. So I had to stop making those bags halfway through. But, excuse me, I should be able to finish those up this week. The inside fabric to go with the pineapples, I love it because it kind of looks like the, the side of the pineapple, right? <laughs> How cool is that? 
But yeah, it's this really pretty um, indigo color, and it matches the purple and blue that are on the outside on the pineapples here, so super cute. Anyway, so this is going up in the shop um, today or tomorrow whenever I get uh, pictures taken and get it posted, and um, more to come next time. So, um, I think that's all I want to talk about. This is rather long. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I am going to put a reminder in my calendar to record a podcast in a week. Who is say a week. And I'm kind of curious. Do you guys, uh, are you interested in the live podcast experience? Or does is that not a preference for you? Or what? Because I, I'm noticing that more podcasters are doing the live stream stuff um, as opposed to the pre-recorded and edited podcasts and I'm just wondering, I'm really curious, are you guys interested in the live stuff? Because I would be interested in trying that out. Um, it may mean that you actually hear me sneeze on camera, uh, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so just let me know in the comments below if that's something you're interested in, and if you don't really have a preference, that's cool too. And, uh, I will definitely see you guys in a week. Maybe I'll have way more squares on my blanket. Probably not. I'll probably immediately lose mojo on that, because that's how my life works. Thanks for coming, thanks for sticking around, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys in about a week. Bye, happy knitting!